You are fake news. Fake news. What do you think? This is the Fake News Watch, your alternative news source without the alternative facts. I'm Kaylee Fagan. This is the first week after spring break, so we're going to take a step back from the controversial big idea stuff and ease back in with a pretty straightforward talk about headlines. Headlines are everywhere. You can't escape them these days. Writing sensational, gimmicky, or clickbait headlines is one of the easiest strategies that so many fake news publications use to lure in casual news consumers. And for many people, the headlines that appear on their Facebook feed are the only news that that person will get that day. You know, this isn't anyone's fault. You know, people are busy. It's hard to read a whole story when you're on your way to work or scrolling on your phone to look less awkward in a crowd. But this means that the headlines matter and have a real influence over a person's understanding of the news and subsequently the world around them. This weekend saw quite a few exciting headlines after that little healthcare debacle, but some were better than others. And unfortunately, it's usually the bad headlines that grab our attention the most. For example, Trump is extremely bad at making deals. Trump's approval rating tanks to the lowest level of any president's first 60 days. Fox News host blasts Paul Ryan hours after Trump plugs her show. And of course, Trump just called for Paul Ryan to step down in the most cowardly way. You might be wondering, who the hell am I to say what makes a good headline? It makes sense that the headlines that get the reader's attention most effectively are the best headlines. But that's where you're wrong, my friend. (laughs) Professional journalists actually have to follow a pretty clear set of rules and standards when writing headlines, which have been agreed upon for decades. Now, obviously, these rules are tweaked over time to match the changing media culture. But there's a real custom and practice for this that journalists, especially newspaper writers, have to follow. So when I say that a headline is bad, I'm saying that the writer of that headline is not doing a good job of following the rules. Now, with that said, the average person has never really been held responsible for knowing about the rules of journalism before, so I don't blame anyone for not thinking about this kind of thing. You know, historically, that problem has only belonged to the actual journalists. The same way that patients aren't expected to know how to write prescriptions or that the patrons at a restaurant don't have to know how to make all the food on the menu. But that's because back in the day, reporters and their editors were the only people writing the headlines. Now, you can write whatever you want online and get just as many views as any other news publication. So you might not have had any interest in learning the rules of headline writing, but You're watching this, so you must have at least a slight desire to understand media better. And today, you're going to learn those rules anyway. First of all, there's the AP Stylebook. This looks a lot like a dictionary, but is actually an even bigger pain in the ass for everyone that works in the news industry. This book exists to make sure that there's at least some level of uniformity in style among different news publications. The headlines entry lays out all the basics. For example... Only the first word in a headline and other pronouns need to be capitalized, never spell out numbers, always spell the U.S. without periods, and avoid abbreviations. It also reminds headline writers to attribute carefully and clearly label any opinion, op-ed, or analysis pieces. Then you have journalism textbooks, like this one, that help with voice and content for actually writing the headlines. On page 185, this says that headlines must be accurate, get to the point quickly, summarize the story, set the tone, and be as clear and direct as possible. All the while using active voice, present tense, subject, verb, object sentences when you can, and attribute as much as possible. Now, the major takeaway here is that clickbaity headlines that tell you how to feel about a story or simply tease to what you may or may not learn by clicking this should be a red flag. So if a headline uses words like extremely or cowardly or ambiguous but enticing verbs like blast and tank, proceed with caution and think twice about sharing it without reading it closely. Now, that request may seem obvious, but a study out of Columbia University found that 60% of links that are shared on social media were never clicked by the person that posted them. Similarly, the American Press Institute found that 60% of people don't regularly click on news stories at all and rely solely on the headlines to learn everything they need to know. Let's let that sink in. Six out of 10 people don't get past the headlines, but that does not stop them from sharing and retweeting stories that they haven't read. And even under the best circumstances, when readers are at their most attentive, least rushed, and genuinely interested in a story, people reading from their phones almost never spend more than two measly minutes reading a news story, according to the Pew Research Center. Headlines may not seem like a big deal. You know, I get it. I signed up to study this stuff and you didn't. That's a fair argument. But 
for most Americans, the headline is the whole story. And these headlines are just not enough. Headline writing is hard and it requires practice. But now you know what to look for and hopefully have a better understanding of what a bad headline looks like. You need to be able to read your Facebook feed and come out smarter, discerning what news is credible and what is sensational and exaggerated or even worse, fake. So with that said, please remember to support accurate and verifiable news by paying attention to the headlines. And as always, seek the truth and share it. <laughs>